What's going on everybody? My name is Rev and welcome back to another Dauntless video. Today I'm going to be teaching you everything that you need to know about weapons and what weapons are going to be the most useful and beneficial for crafting first. Best weapons in the game, let's say. And the first thing I want to do is go into the loadout screen by going into the main menu and going to equipment and just very briefly go over how power and uh, how to read the character sheet in terms of what your weapon is doing for you. I've done this in an armor video that I made not too long ago. And so if you want to hear more about the character sheet, you can check out that video. Um, starting with the Onus of Boreas, the portrait of the sword has a number in the top left corner of that box, and that number is 10. And that means that the weapon is level 10. If you have it as just crafted, it will probably say zero, you know, one, two, three, four, as you keep upgrading said weapon. The upgrades directly affect the power, which is the yellow number next to the sword icon. In this case, it's 500. And at level 10, you have 500 power. Right next to that, we have the elemental affinity of said weapon. In this case, we are using an ice weapon. So we deal 80 additional power uh, with fire behemoths. And we deal minus 40 with frost behemoths. That means... If we take this weapon to a fire behemoth, we'll deal more damage. And if we to bring it to an ice behemoth, we're going to deal less damage. So there are elemental affinities and you should pay attention to them because they're very important. And dealing extra damage means you're finishing hunts faster, getting more loot, etc. Getting a little bit more in depth with weapons. If you click on a weapon, you can A, re-equip all the different weapons that you, you know, if you want to change weapons, this is how you do it probably pretty straightforward but just know that every weapon has a passive in this case boreas's sword has plus three conditioning a unique effect which is using your special continually generates frost sprites um that is something to look for unique effects are not on every single weapon and it, they're typically what make a weapon very strong that's just something to look out for make sure the you know the weapons have unique effects that you're going to be using every single hunt uh, moving on, we can talk about the sockets. Sockets in, are in all pieces of gear. They cannot be changed, but this is how you add cells, which are another important part of Dauntless, into your weapons and armor. Also, through the mastery system, we can gain different specials within um, a particular weapon type. In this case, I'm using Valiant Overdrive, but I can use Ardent Cyclone or Avenging Overdrive, which are all different things they make my special do different things mods are just a way to kind of change your play style and push an advantage or make up for a weakness in another way in this case i can make my dodge attacks always critically strike for example those are mods mainly gained through the mastery system and i'll have a video on the mastery system but let's focus on weapons and at this point in the video i want to rotate on over to the weapon crafter and talk about all the different weapons that you should be crafting for the early and late stages of the game. Because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long and I don't want to waste too much of your guys' time when it comes to, you know, what weapon should I craft, I'm going to be very general and we're going to stay on this particular sword screen. Just know that if I'm talking about, let's say, the Nasher sword, let's say that I'm also talking about the axe, hammer, chain blades, war pike, A400 or Aether Strikers and the uh, Repeaters as well. The Repeaters have a little bit more of a, a, a different crafting system. And so I'm actually going to go over the Repeaters after this. And so let's just go over, hey, these are weapons that you should be looking out for and have a use and are definitely worth note. And then we'll go over some more niche weapons that are like, hey, these particular chain blades are better than all of the other chain blades in you get the idea. So we'll uh, we'll go over the general elements. For neutral, the neutral elements, the Nasher Sword easily takes the cake. As a passive of Rage Hunter, all of the other neutral weapons do not have any unique effects that are worth noting. And typically, when you look at other Nasher weapons, you'll see that we have power sockets and utility sockets, technique sockets. And those are important to dealing more damage. It's actually the sword that doesn't have it at all. And that's still fine. We have passive damage in Rage Hunter and 
yeah as far as as a general rule neutral weapons aren't very strong but you'll still need them for mastery so knowing that the nasher sword or the nasher weapons um are the better choice that will assist you in the future even if you might not understand it right now recently added to the game were legendary weapons legendary weapons take the cake for the element that they were added to and in this case it's the lightning element we have prismatic sockets and you can put any cell in those they have a special passive and they can also bond with another electrical type weapon so they take on the passive as well so i could throw the drask unique effects and passive into this weapon and it just it fuses it, it, there's no reason to use the the weapon that i'm using if i have these prismatic sockets they're just highly versatile these were just added to the game again and so um yeah it, it, this won't be crafted for a very long time but yeah really good electrical type weapon but until you get to that point let's talk about the lightning weapon that i just talked about drask weapons in general these weapons offer 30 percent damage to tails or the head depending on if you're using a blunt weapon and they just deal great damage and you can get these weapons early the nasher sword you can get early the drask weapon you can get early and they have nice sockets nice unique effect definitely worth grabbing definitely get them um, another weapon that you can get early and we talked about earlier in this video is the boreas weapons boreas is not everybody's favorite fight in the world but you can craft this weapon get it to plus five and then kind of forget about it if you're not really excited about fighting boreas again but the unique effect in general is kind of meh but most ice weapons are kind of meh so uh, just take whatever ice weapon you'd like. I'm not going to talk about any more of the ice weapons other than Boreas because I don't really feel like... I feel like they're all very even. You can kind of just pick whichever one you like and upgrade it. Um, the sword for Boreas in particular is very strong because the unique effect is on all the time so long as you're in special. And so if you're in special great you're dealing a ton of extra damage so highly recommend it if you're a sword player get the onus of boreas over the other frost weapons first um since it's right here let's talk about a radiant weapon easily the best radiant weapon of its element valamir's weapon now this requires a particular play style and it requires you to not get hit or to heal frequently uh once charged your next attack deals x amount of radiant uh, bonus radiant damage charge rate increased with higher current health now, this means that you can kind of build tanky and charge this weapon faster. And the reason why this is important and why it's important to have a radiant weapon to begin with is some of the best weapons in the game are the Ritstalker weapons. Now, this is an Umbral Behemoth and Valamir's weapon is a radiant weapon. Now, radiant and Umbral are kind of like yin and yang, where radiant deals extra damage to Umbral and Umbral deals extra damage to radiant. That being said, Valamir is significantly easier. Riftstalker Rift is more of the pub stomper. Like it, it, a statistic came out uh, many months ago that said that most slayers die to Riftstalker. The, like Riftstalker out of all the behemoths have killed the most slayers. And so you want to bring, you know, the heavy hitter to Riftstalker. So we're talking about Valamir's uh, weapon set. The quest line, if memory serves, says you can fight valamir or you can fight riftstalker and you always want to go for valamir first <laughs> valamir has really really strong stats aether hunter is really strong against riftstalker it's just the answer to riftstalker so definitely craft these early and you're you're going to be set for her fighting that riftstalker for the first time now let's talk about riftstalker's weapons riftstalker is very important to know how to fight and that's because they have some of the best weapons i would say this is the in my book this is the best weapon in the game this is the best weapon set across the board in the game as strong stats strong sockets and the unique effect is insane you generate orbs as you deal damage those orbs give you additional damage plus 2.5 percent for five seconds and then once you surpass five orbs that effect doubles you can almost get to 30 percent passive extra damage just like a drask sword or any of the drask weapons but you don't need to be locked into a part hitting a particular part 
and so it's really really strong it's also um one of the only weapons that features some of the low life uh perks in wild frenzy which is more a more advanced build and but also very strong late game build um let's see what else can we talk about we can talk about fire weapons fire weapons are very important early game Ember main weapons are very strong at breaking parts. Everyone just starting Dauntless should craft these up because breaking parts is very important. The earlier the earlier you are in the game. Um not really much more to argue there. There are better fire weapons, but breaking parts is important. So take that as you will. Right below it, the Hellion weapons, again, one of the stronger weapon sets in the game. The armor is very strong, highly offensive. The weapons are very offensive and push that narrative even further. Two power sockets, three overpower. You can just, by looking at this weapon and what it offers you, you're just like, yeah, that's a really strong weapon. So um, definitely craft up regardless of weapon type that you're playing. Make sure this is in your arsenal. Let's see if there's anything else. Ah, yes, the, the Terra weapons. Let's talk about Skarn. On the opposite side of the spectrum, with Hellion weapons, there is the Skarn weapons. Skarn is a very easy behemoth to take on, and regardless of what weapon type you use, having this in your arsenal is going to keep you alive. If you bring this to Escalation, to you know your first Rift Stalker fight, this will help bridge the gap and mitigate a lot of the incoming damage that you're going to be dealing with. This generates a shield as you deal damage. You're gonna put stacks of a, a stacking shield on yourself that lasts for 12 seconds, and it ref it refreshes the more damage that you deal. So if let's say I have one stack, and then that's ticking down at 12 seconds. If I get to two stacks, it resets and it goes to 12 seconds again. So you can get to an insane health pool if you keep dealing damage and don't get hit. So when those big hits do come out, it's gonna mitigate all of it. You can push that even further with bulwark tonics and yeah so your survivability goes through the roof with these weapons highly recommended for new players it's very easy to craft and it just yeah it just helps across the board um i think that just about covers the elemental types i'm gonna skip on over to the repeaters and we'll talk about those barrels and prisms and all that stuff now when it comes to repeaters it's pretty straightforward when it comes to barrels, these are what control your element type. You want to upgrade them all as soon as possible. Honestly, you want to upgrade every single part that you can. Uh, I highly recommend the captain's grip. Just stick with it. Saboteur's grip is useful, but not useful all the time. Captain's grip is useful all the time. And when it comes to chambers, all of them have a use, but the salvo chamber is that general use. Your marksman chamber is for your part breaks and full bar chamber does more damage than the salvo chamber but has more conditional effects to it and it's i believe it's the last chamber you receive and so salvo chamber and marksman chamber you can keep them even if you have the extra parts but for the most part salvo is going to be your go-to now this is where it kind of gets a little bit more interesting and as you start unlocking prisms i believe the first one you get are these two the stoneheart and snowdrift and these are like unique effects on the particular weapons but the cool thing about the repeaters is you're not locked into a particular elemental type you can bring the unique effect with you so we have the scarn you know this is what's good for bridging the gap between weapons and difficulty and and as long as you're dealing damage you're going to be generating that shield on yourself which is nice if you're taking extra damage Snowdrift is a good, easy, um, easy to craft early game prism and highly recommended for the people looking to deal more damage. Now the end game prism is easily the searing prism. This is the Hellion unique effect and the Hellion unique effect is very, very good for the repeaters. They attack fast and you get that extra blaze damage very quickly, stacks up very qu nicely. Next up in line for the late game is the Eclipse Prism, which is the Rift Stalker unique effect, that stacking orb that can double up. But for the most part, you're going to see the most return on the Searing Prism, 250 damage for every 10 shots, which is pretty much a repeater clip. Very nice and I'm um, going to deal a lot of extra damage. Not really much more to talk about. If you're fighting an Umbral Behemoth you can, and you have access to it, you can use the Brilliant Prism and that is Valamir's unique effect. And we kind of gone over over all of these and so one last thing about 
repeaters that I want to cover is the power score because it it deals with power score very differently the the power score of your repeaters is the culmination of all of the parts and so you can see that the standard barrel has 153 captain's grip 153 full bore 144 brilliant prism 91 now the thing about barrels is that's what you're changing you want to change your element type and so you're going to want to upgrade as many of these as possible however if you keep your standard barrel the sta uh, upgraded you're going to be dealing a flat amount of damage and that's probably going to be the barrel of choice to upgrade first just because you won't have any elemental weaknesses or um, drawbacks or buffs and as you get more resources you'll be able to upgrade them more but for the most part pick a grip pick a chamber and pick a prism and fully upgrade those because I believe early you'll have the snowdrift one and that one's a worthy um component to max out to I think plus five would probably be the max at the time and then as you start gaining more when you get the searing prism you know that's the best in slot one and so you'll want to fully upgrade that and so I just wanted to briefly touch on power score for the repeaters that's going to do it for this video hopefully it helped you I know it's very fast paced very general but hopefully it did help you if you like this video a like would be really appreciated if you want to support the channel you can subscribe and use creator code revurad in the dauntless in-game store or the epic game store thank you all again so very much for watching and I will see you on the shattered isles